welcome to my other show. I'm back. I'm to post my videos after this. My bad day is February 1st. It's just past. I'm about to show you a video. Now we're after that. Um, um, it said my worst, worst movie speeder experience. Jesse B. She my favorite. A cyber. It's Jesse B. So today I thought I would tell you guys a few V times and they are all about my worst experiences at the movies. And I've collected these stories over the last like two or three years. So I think I'm ready to tell them to you. I think they are ready to be heard. So here we go. My first story takes place just last week. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know what I'm talking about because I tweeted about it for a while. I was very angry. <laughs> and just a side note, if you want to know what V times I'm going to make, before I make them, oh, just follow me on that. Twitter because I tweet about everything that's happening in my life. I think, um, what she said, the worst spam about, um, a bunch of groups of teenagers talking in the middle of the movie, the, the boy. I don't want to see that. Okay, so last week, my boyfriend Kyle and I decided to go see the movie The Boy, which is a horror yeah. movie that recently came out. And it's about like a cliche, creepy doll. But that's yes. okay, as long as I'm getting scared. I'm such a weirdo because I don't even care yes, what the movie's about. Right. Really. If it scares me, that's cool. I just love feeling scared. And my boyfriend, on the other hand, absolutely hates scary movies. And not because he's scared of them. He just prefers to go see like dramatic history movies or adventure action movies like he likes those types of movies the ones that have like amazing plot lines and win awards every year like horror movies never win awards could you imagine yeah. if they did and uh best picture goes to paranormal activity thank you for making another movie about a poor family who moves into a house gets haunted by ghosts their children get stolen and possessed by demons. Thank you so much. Once again, it's quite wonderful. Oh, wonderful job. And best nice. supporting role goes to the ghost in scene five that moved the curtains. Yeah, it's okay. just not going to happen. Quiet. So no it was best. a Friday night and we bought our tickets to see the boy. We walk into the theater and it's surprisingly empty. We had like a million seats to choose from. And we usually like sitting on the top row because it's like the best view. So that's where we go. We sit down on the top row. And about 10 minutes before... Before the movie is gonna start, a group of teenagers are here the next day and go see the boy again. Hope it. Sorry, yeah. Meal and the whole world put in front of you and told that you could only eat half of it. Like, no, I want it all. But the movie. Okay. Sorry. If you asked me what the first 45 minutes of the movie was about, I would say. I don't know. So I look at Kyle and I was like, I have to say something to them. I have to go. Sorry, I'm wasting Teen it. Teenage friends walk into the theater. I'm not even over exaggerating. 20 friends. These people came in like a flock of geese, like migrating buffalo, like a school field trip. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. Bottom line is that these people took off the entire theater, which is not a problem. That's fine. I just thought that logically when the movie started, they would stop talking. But my hope started dwindling when the trailer started playing for other movies and they were still talking during the trailers and i was like okay that's fine maybe when the actual movie starts they will be quiet like these people were not just talking quietly they were like screaming at the top of their lungs these people were probably in their last year of high school and they sounded like a giant kindergarten class like where was their teacher i think it's nap time so the movie starts and i kid you not the people in front of us would not stop talking and it wasn't like little whispers it was one of those let's talk as loud as we can so we can piss off everybody in the theater. They were talking about everything from cars to homework to school to parties, everything. Like, excuse me, I am trying to watch an intriguing movie about a doll that kills people. Can't you understand that? Or did you guys want to keep talking about the shoes you bought yesterday? Well, guys, they talked for about 45 minutes into the movie. And that's when I had enough. I was just so done at that point. Because I couldn't even hear the dialogue from the movie. I could not hear anything. I couldn't even concentrate on what was going going on in the movie. If you asked me what the first 45 minutes of the movie was about, I would say I don't know. So I look at Kyle and I was like, I have to say something to them. I have to go down there and say something.
something to them. And he was like, Jess, that's probably not a good idea. You're very annoyed right now. You don't want to start something. So instead, we both just stood up and walked out of the theater. Halfway through the movie. Do you know how hard it is to leave a movie halfway? I mean, I know I didn't know most of what was happening in the movie because I was concentrating on what these people were saying. But still, I could tell that things in the movie were starting to get good. That's like getting your most favorite meal in the whole world put in front of you and told that you could only eat half of it. Like, no, I want it all. But anyways, we end up going to the manager and telling him all about what happened, all about these crazy teenagers. And I'm not saying that every teenager does that, okay? These people are just really immature. There's respectful teenagers, and then there's the ones who just want to cause trouble and annoy everybody. So this guy was so nice. This manager was amazing. He refunded our money, and he gave us two free tickets to see another movie. So Kyle and I decide to go to the theater the next day and go see the boy again, hoping that there would be no disruptions. And thank goodness, the day we went, which was the Saturday, everybody was respectful. We got to actually watch the movie. It was great. The movie was good. Everything was good. I'm just still slightly annoyed by the other day. I don't know why. I just can't get it out of my head. Like, you go to the theater to watch a movie. You watch the screen. You watch the movie happening. You don't go there to talk. Like, if you want to talk, go to dinner. Go somewhere where you're free to talk. Don't disturb everybody that paid money to see a movie. Like, it's just beyond immature. I'm sorry. That's just, like, one of my biggest pet peeves. So let's move on to the next story now that I got that off my chest. I actually filmed that whole day on my vlog channel. So if you physically want to see my frustration, you could go there. The link is in the description. All right, so this next yep, story takes place last year. I went to see a movie with my sister and my mom. We had like a I little girl's this. night. It was really cute. So we walked and into the theater and all. because this was a popular movie one. that we were seeing, most of the seats were taken except for this one row. There was this one row of seats that were empty. And there was this woman like guarding this entire row of seats. An entire row, like 30 seats or however many is in a row. So I walk up to her and I'm like, do you mind if we get past you so we can sit down? And she was like, no, I am saving these seats for people. And I go, you're telling me you're saving seats for 30 people. I'm pretty sure you can't do that. Like, I know it's cool to save a couple seats for your friends, but an entire row? I don't think so. And guys, this row of 30 seats were the only places left to sit. There were no other seats or obviously you would have went and sat there. So I was like, okay, well, are these seats like booked for a birthday party? Did you pay to book these seats? Did you have a party at the movie theater that you're saving these seats for? And she was like, no, I'm saving these seats for my friends. So I was like, no, you don't have the authority to save 30 seats for people. What? You can't just stop people from sitting down. <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. But this lady does not move. She was like guarding the door to Narnia or something. She was basically pulling a Gandalf on me. You shall not pass. So I look over to my mom and sister and they look just so confused and they did not know what to do about this situation. So I looked at this lady and I'm like, you know what? You cannot tell us what to do. We are sitting down. We paid for our tickets. We are sitting down in one of these 30 seats. So I like move past this woman and I tell my mom and my sister to follow me and they do and we sit down in one of these 30 seats that she was saving and everything was good. We look back at that lady like, ha, you cannot tell us what to do. You are no longer queen of the seats. And guys, when the movie started, guess how many of her friends showed up? Seven. She was blocking an entire row for seven people. Like, that just blows my mind. We paid for our tickets too. You do not own the theater. That was just so crazy to me, so I thought that I would share that. And the last story is about a time two years ago that I went to the theater with just my sister. And we're like going back in time here, slowly. So my sister and I arrive at the theater to see a late movie. It was probably around 10 at night when we parked there. We were just about to walk into the building when two guys like walked right in front of us and blocked our way in. They started calling us names like beautiful and gorgeous and asked us what we were doing that night. And we were just like, oh, we're just going to see a movie. And I take my sister's hand and I walk with her into the theater. And they followed us inside and I'm thinking, great, these guys cannot take a hint. So I turn around and tell them that we're not interested. And one of the guys was like, Guy, do you have a boyfriend? And I said, yes, because I actually did have a boyfriend. I had Kyle. And then they look at my sister Mandy and they're like, well, do you have a boyfriend? And my sister didn't have one at the time, but she still said yes to kind of get them to go away. And then one of the guys was like, I don't believe you. What's the name of your boyfriend? And Mandy pauses for a couple seconds, I guess, to think about the name. So I jump in to say her boyfriend's name. She says it at the same time. So we say a different guy's name at the same time. I asked, like, Steven. She said, like, Matt. And I was like, oh my gosh. 
this is not good. So they knew we were lying, obviously, right? So they were like, oh, we have a bunch of liars here. And I was like, it doesn't even matter. Like, leave us alone. We're not interested. So we turn around and, get and walk over to get some popcorn. And these stupid guys follow us again. It's time for those so that I wish I could have just, like, turned around and, like, whipped out a lightsaber. You know what I mean? Like, I'd have my lightsaber in my hand and I'd be like, no, you're messing with the wrong girls. I'm a Jedi. And just freak them out and they run away. But life is not like that, unfortunately. Because trust me, if I could be a Jedi, I would. But then one of the guys takes out his phone and holds it over to me. And he's like, give me your number. And I obviously say no. I'm like, no, I do not want anything. I don't want anything from you. Go away. And then guys, he takes a $5 bill out of his pocket and hands it to me. This guy wanted to pay me for my number. It's like, what is going on here? I was like actually in shock. Like, Wait, is this real life? What is happening? This has to be a joke, right? So because of this really weirded out by his gesture, and I don't know if it's a joke or not, I kind of just laughed to myself and Mandy starts kind of laughing too because we didn't really know how to react to him handing me money for my number. And he gets so mad that we're laughing that he like violently turns around to walk away. But as he's turning, he like bumps into this couple that walked into the movie theater. There was this really, really buff guy with his girlfriend and this buff guy did not like the fact that this guy just ran right into him. So he like pushes the guy away and then they get into this huge fight. And I look at Mandy and I'm like, this is our time to escape. Let's escape while they're distracted. And then we like run into our movie and didn't see them again. But it was just like really, really weird. Like I have never had a guy try to pay me for my number. Like what? It was just really strange. But anyways, those are my three weird movies theater experiences. I probably have so many more, but those are the three that come to mind right now. As usual, guys, my social media information is below, along with my vlog channel and my PO box information, so check that out. And yeah, until next time, guys, bye! Aspire Jesse V! <laughs>